What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff that Call of Duty just dropped. Well, yesterday, the time you guys are watching this, but yeah, a lot of information, a lot of news. So strap in, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're new. Okay, we're going to be covering a lot of Mono for 3 content, a lot of Call of Duty news going forward. Uh, again, you know, game drops next weekend. Whenever I get back, I think it's like Sunday or Monday, something like that. Uh, I'll be, you know, posting videos pretty much every single day, uh, hopefully till the end of the year. So strap in again and hopefully you enjoy the, the, the video today. All right, let's get into it. All right. First piece of news. Uh, Charlie Intel says weapon tuning is not in Mono Warfare 3. Sledgehammer Games has removed it from the game for Mono Warfare 2 and Mono Warfare 3. A lot of people are saying it's a good thing. I honestly kind of agree. I don't think it's a bad thing. I do think just weapon tuning in general, just I kind of got what they were going for, like in terms of like, you know, kind of wanting more of a skill gap as well as just kind of like fine tuning your stuff. Like they just wanted to add on to the gunsmith. But to be honest, they just made it too complicated, right? Sometimes less is more. And in this case, weapon tuning, you know, while it's like a unique idea, I'll give them props for that. It just didn't have any place in Call of Duty, you know? There was just no need to just make your ADS like way slower in order to increase damage and things like that. And to be honest, for me, I barely noticed it, you know? Like if I was using a tuned weapon versus a completely non-tuned weapon, the only time I noticed stuff was when I was at a detriment and my ADS was just way slower. To this day, I still have no clue what Infinity Ward was thinking when they made Mono for two weapons like ADS and sprint out speeds like ridiculously slow. Like I have no idea what they were on, but that's the first thing that I wanted to cover. Uh, it's kind of cool that, you know, since Mono for Two weapons are going to be in the game as well, it's kind of cool that they're not going to have, you know, weapon tuning for that either. Um, so that's neat. You know, that's the first piece of news. Next up, I want to talk about a bit about the campaign, um, the campaign video that I put up yesterday. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday when you guys are watching this. Um, it's doing pretty well right now, but basically, yeah. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, uh, I didn't really talk about the campaign specifically, and I should have mentioned that there's no spoilers or anything like that in that video. But basically, this campaign, Mono for Three, is apparently the shortest campaign of all time. Uh, the second shortest was Cold War at five and a half hours. This one takes about five hours to beat, even if you explore all the open combat missions. To be honest with you guys, five hours is not a lot of time. If you were someone who bought this game purely for the campaign, I cannot see a world where this is worth $70 to you, okay? That's just me. That's what I heard from like JB and a lot of other content creators. Shout out JB, by the way, if you haven't you know checked out his channel, J Bow in Demand, that dude is grinding. Shout out to that guy. Um, yeah, putting amazing content every single day. But yeah, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the campaign. Not, not a big fan of it. Um, no clue when I'm gonna play it. I really don't think I will. Um, so that's that. The rest of the news and the rest of the stuff that is in this video uh, is going to come at you really fast and I'm just going to kind of give my thoughts on it. Uh, we got some primary weapons at launch, right? We got some ARs. Uh, it looks like we got six of them at launch. So the SVA 545, the MTZ 556, the Holger 556, the MCW, the DG 58, and the FR 556. Uh, we got three battle rifles, the Bass B, the Sidewinder, and the MTZ 762. Uh, SMGs we got, it looks like six or so striker wsm or wsp swarm the amr9 the wsp9 the rival nine the striker nine a lot of nines we got three shotguns we got three lmgs four marksman rifles three sniper rifles so good stuff good stuff there uh, we got a lot of primary weapons um it looks like we're getting over a hundred weapons at launch because we're getting like 70 something from mono for two as well as like 30 or 40 ish in mono for three cool stuff there no real const uh no real you know problems or anything there uh let's talk about the streaks we have a lot of streaks and i don't know why but a lot of people are just not happy with this list let me go through this list i might take a few minutes here on this list specifically all right uav mosquito drone sam turret bomb drone guardian care package counter uv cluster mine precision airstrike cruise missile remote turret uh, mortar strike sae juggernaut recon wilson overwatch kilo vtol uh, emergency airdrop carpet bomb advanced uav chopper gunner gunship and juggernaut i don't have a problem with this list yes my only cons like my only complaint i guess if i had one and i'm guessing this is the biggest complaint that a lot of people have is the fact that there's like no real new streaks i guess like a lot of people are not fans of the cluster mine and the bomb drone but you know i guess the mosquito drone kind of technically is new uh, carpet bomb, I think we've seen in like what, World War II or something like that? 
yeah, none of them are like specifically new, but at the same time, what do you really want, right? As long as these are like important streaks, as long as they like do a lot of damage and are like, I guess, lethal, what else do you really want, right? What else are you looking for? Like, right off the bat, for me, like UAV cruise missile and like VTOL is a combo, right? UAV counter, UAV chopper gunner, uh, UAV SAE gunship, um, you know, things like that. Like, there's a lot of like potential, there's a lot of good stuff in here. I don't know about the remote turret. I think that was the one in the beta, but like, is that basically a sentry gun or not, right? Like, I don't want to be like controlling that. Um, it'd be cool if we had like an EMP. I, I think I saw some people responding like, yeah, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the ones we want, it's like, like an EMP or something like that. But a lot of people are just not happy with this list. I, I don't know, man. I, I'm okay with it. It seems pretty standard. And honestly, we get a lot of them, right? There's a lot of selection here. And I think that's what's really good about, you know, like the good qualities, there's selection, there's picks. It's not like you can only run three streaks. You know, it's not like you can only do like one thing at a time. I'm, I'm very on board with this. You know, maybe that's a hot take. I know a lot of people are just not happy with it, but yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm content with this list. I think that we'll probably drop a few more in the DLC and in, in the upcoming seasons and stuff. Even if they don't, I'm pretty, pretty cool with it. You know, no, no real complaints here. Let's move on to the field upgrades. All right. So we got the heartbeat sensor, the med box, the inflatable decoy, the comm scrambler, tack insert, trophy system, munitions box, ACS, tactical camera, D DOS, deployable cover, recon drone, dead silence, loadout drop, portable radar, smoke airdrop, suppression mine, and anti-armor rounds. That's a lot of stuff, dude. They're packing this game with a lot of stuff. I don't know how I feel about the dead silence thing. If you're gonna have dead silence in the game, please take away that stupid beep, okay? Like, that is just so dumb. The, the stupid beep that lets everyone know where you are and when you're starting to, your, to use your dead silence. You know, especially in the things like search and destroy, it's so slow. Just let me hit the two buttons, let me hit the button or whatever it is that, that starts the dead silence, and then let me just go ghost protocol. Like, turn off the music, turn off the footsteps, and just like, let me move, right? Like, you don't need to hit the stupid button, and there's an, like an animation that comes out your your guns gets put away it's so dumb no nobody needs that i th i trust sledgehammer games is smart enough to like not have that whereas infinity ward oh look how realistic it is when i hit a button and go quiet like no dude so dumb i i can't stand infinity ward don't get me started you know of this field upgrade list uh, I think a lot of them are more so useful for like Warzone, right, right? Like the anti-armor rounds and like the heartbeat sensor, stuff like that. I don't think, it, honestly kind of interesting that a heartbeat sensor is not in like the tactical for once because it's normally uh, in the tactical slot. Um, a lot of stuff like you're never going to use, right? Like, uh, for instance, like a, a munitions box, you like probably rarely use a uh, portable radar. You eh, maybe, maybe not. I, th I think some of this stuff is definitely for war zone, right? Like a recon drone, uh, anti-armor mines, uh, anti-armor rounds, the smoke airdrop, right? Like a lot of this stuff is not going to be in multiplayer. At least I think so. Um, inflatable decoy. That's kind of funny that that's returning, but yeah, pretty much, you know, if I'm running one, it's probably going to be like dead silence or a muni box and trophy system for like hard point. Other than that, I'm not really going to mess with too many of these other things. Uh, let's move on to tacticals because we got a lot of those as well. We got the stun grenade. Uh, let's just talk about multiplayer, okay? So we got the stun grenade, battle rage, smoke grenade, scatter mine, decoy grenade, flash grenade, snapshot grenade, shock stick, stim, tear gas, and the EMD gr grenade. Um, so nothing particularly new. I think of this, maybe battle rage is like the newest thing. Maybe a scatter mine is new, uh, but not nothing like crazy that you're just like, whoa, what's this? You know, um, I'm kind of okay with it. You know, honestly, whenever they introduce a new tactical, it's usually something like annoying, kind of like the shock stick back in Black Ops 2. Yeah, I could deal with less annoying stuff, right? Flash grenades and, and stun grenades are already annoying enough. I don't really feel the need to, you know, have more stuff thrown at my face and blind in me so uh honestly if everyone just used stims or everyone used like uh decoy grenades or something like that like i'd be fine with that or snapshot grenades even you know like yeah sure light me up or something that's fine but you know shock sticks and things that just like mess with my screen i'm good i don't really need more of that stuff in my game and lastly let's wrap it up here with the lethal so we got the frag grenade the claymore oh boy uh throwing knife thermite thermobaric grenade not sure what that's about yet prox mine 
Drill Charge, Semtex, C4, hopefully C4 actually works, Molotov Cocktail, that's gonna be in Warzone actually, and then the Throwing Star, which is interesting, and the Breacher Drone. <laughs> the Breacher Drone is definitely gonna be funny. Throwing Star, I'm guessing, is gonna be similar to a throwing knife, not quite sure, but that's that's interesting. Maybe it'll like blow up or something if you throw it. Pretty cool stuff. Um, overall, we got a lot of information. I think the key thing uh, from today's takeaway about like all the, the news for Mono for 3 is that it seems like this game is going to be filled, filled with content, filled with variety. And say what you want about the game, say what you want about the developer studio. I am a fan of, of variety. I'm a fan of choice, right? I want to see different stuff. I want to see people use different stuff. You know, I think one of the main issues from like, say Black Ops 2, right? A fan favorite game is that there were so limited perks. There was so limited like things you could do. I mean, yes, there was the pick 10 system, but like in terms of perks, if you were running stuff, you had to run toughness. You pretty much had to run dexterity. And then if you wanted to move, you were using lightweight. Otherwise you'd use like flak jacket or ghost in the tier one, you know, in, in like in these games, for the most part, everyone just uses like one or two weapons, right? And that's to be expected. But as long as you have uh, like a lot of choice, a lot of variety, I think at the end of the day, it's it's going to be fine. Even if people do gravitate towards the same like two to three weapons, because we're going to have a bunch of maps, a bunch of lethals, tacticals, field upgrades, streaks, you know, things like that. We're going to have a lot of choice. So yeah, I'm all for it. Um, that's pretty much it for the video. You know, let me know what you guys think about all this stuff in the comment section down below. Uh, I'm happy with it. You know, I know that's a hot take i know you know it's it's easy to just hate on call of duty these days but so far so far so good all right i'm not going to complain about stuff that i don't think is warranted to complain about that's just me but yeah you let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below uh feel free to leave a like subscribe if you're new and thanks so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next video have a great day guys peace peace and peace